Hello my friends, uh, today I'm going to share with you uh, how I go about making kombucha, right here. Um, this is uh, what you can purchase in a grocery store. Um, it costs about uh, $4, almost $4 a bottle. And for me, uh, to find a grocery store that sells this, it's about an hour and a half drive. So when I make the drive, I usually buy a half a dozen to a dozen bottles at a time, which can get very expensive. And uh, if it's not convenient to make the drive, um, uh, you get a lot of time involved there. Uh, so for that reason, I make my own kombucha. Time saving, it's, I have it always available and uh, um, it saves me quite a bit of money. Uh, what I do though is I always save the bottles because the bottles uh, are heavier glass, they have a nice uh, screw on cap, they're easy to fill, uh, less chance of these breaking from the fermented pressure that is going to end up being in them. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, kombucha, it's a fermented food. Um, it's an old uh, drink uh, back from, I guess, uh, ancient uh, China. Uh, it was brewed, brewed there uh, for royalty. It has a lot of benefits. <coughs> um, the probiotics is the reason to be drinking the kombucha. Uh, with our food system now, uh, it with all the chemicals and uh, the Roundup, which is glyphosate, uh, it's doing a lot of bad things to the food and to the people. Um, right now we have a real big problem with uh, um, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, problems with the digestive system, the gut, and I believe that this is all being caused from the consumption of bad food. Uh, notably the glyphosate, which is a chelating uh, chemical that uh, does a lot of bad things. Uh, and some of the genetic engineering foods that uh, uh, produce its own uh, um, pesticides uh, kills the good bacteria in your gut system. Uh, the bacteria that lives in your gut uh, should be in a good balance. Uh, there's lots of bad and good bacteria, and you need to have the good bacteria be dominant in there. There is more probiotics in your gut system, uh, actually ten times more uh, than all the cells in your, the human body. So it's very important that you uh, maintain a real good uh, uh, probiotics in your diet. Uh, what's recommended is that you consume a quarter to a half a cup of fermented foods, which would include the kombucha, uh, daily. Um, this should help maintain uh, a good balance of the uh, probiotics in your system. Now everybody knows that if somebody's on penicillin, the doctor uh, usually recommends afterwards that you take a probiotic. So they do recognize that you do have to have the probiotics, but they don't tell you that you should be consuming it daily. And I believe that that's something that should be done. Um, and you should be trying to keep all your foods clean. Stay away from all the chemicals and the genetic engineering, which has not been tested. Uh, there's a lot of goofy, bad things that they do and they don't want to recognize it. Now, when you make the uh, kombucha, uh, you need a container. Uh, this is the one that I use. I picked this up. It's an old crock pot. I picked it up. I don't use the lid anymore. I don't even know if it works. I never plugged it in. It's one of those that you can't remove the crock, but it has a nice crock inside. And I think I paid $5 for this uh, crock pot. And it works. It's perfect size. It works great for my uh, kombucha. Now the tea that you use, actually what I have is probably the cheapest tea that's sold. I had no idea where it came from. Uh, 100 tea bags in this and it's a cheap tea. Um, the tea is the nutrient uh, for the probiotics and uh, you need to have a tea that is low 
oil content. That Earl Grey tea, which a lot of people drink, um, doesn't make kombucha well. It has too much oils in it, which is bad. Okay, there's five bags. Um, I use six bags of tea in this mix. Uh, also, you need to have sugar in there, and this is to feed the, uh, the bacteria and the yeast, and it'll cause it to ferment. Uh, fermentation process, it takes uh, the sugar, um, as it's eating the sugar, it gives off uh, carbon dioxide and alcohol. So there will be a slight amount of alcohol in the drink, not enough that you have to worry about that uh, kids can drink this. There's not that much of a concern. Okay, one thing that you should use, uh, it feeds on sugar and it should be a high quality sugar. Um, fermenting with uh, corn syrups or uh, maple syrup or honey, not recommended. It's not supposed to uh, uh, do a good job making the kombucha. I'm using, uh, in this case, it's domino sugar, but any time I buy sugar, I make sure that it's cane sugar. Uh, if it's not labeled, most likely it's beet sugar. Sugar beets are all genetically engineered, meaning if it's genetic engineered, it was uh, designed to be sprayed with Roundup, so Roundup will kill all the weeds uh, and leave the, the genetic engineered crop continue growing. Uh, anytime you do that, you have that chemical residue uh, on the plant. And sugar beets, uh, especially being a root crop, uh, will absorb uh, lots of the chemicals that's being sprayed on it. So as of right now, as far as I know, the sugar cane is not uh, genetically engineered. I don't know their harvest practices. Sometimes uh, when uh, foods are harvested now, they're sprayed with Roundup to kill the plant if, if it's not genetic engineered. That makes a more consistent harvest, possibly a higher yield because um, it's uh, allowing more of the chaff to be removed and the farmers call this process uh, desiccating the crop where they dry up the uh, crop so it makes it easier to harvest. They do this with wheat and barley a lot. Um, it allows a lot of the grains that would still be green that wouldn't be released in the uh, threshing process. Uh, it will allow that to uh, be released in the harvest and actually it makes it look like they have a larger yield, which they'll get a little more tonnage uh, per acreage. Um, but it's actually falsifying uh, the actual uh, statistics. Uh, you're not really gaining anything, but you're getting all these bad chemicals. Okay, in my kombucha, I'm going to use about a cup of sugar. Notice I put the uh, tea bags and the uh, sugar in without the liquid. Now, I heat my uh, liquid up in my teapot. And this is full, I don't know how many cups it is, but it doesn't fill this crop completely. Uh, this, this already heated up, it was boiling, and this will dissolve the sugar and brew the tea. Um, I'll leave this set, I need to stir this, I'll leave this set for about 20 minutes, then remove the tea bag. And then I will add cold water uh, so that I can add the mother into this. The mother is the, uh, the SCOBY. SCOBY standing for uh, symbiotic combination of bacteria and yeast. Um, you can't heat that up, it, it will kill it. So the, the uh, tea has to be just warm uh, when it's added, so it will not damage the scooby. Okay, this now I'm going to leave this set for 20 minutes and we'll add the scooby and go from there. Okay, 20 minutes has passed and uh, the water temperature, it's warm. So if it's 
not hot, you're not going to kill your uh, mother, the bacteria and yeast. Okay, the tea bags are going to be removed. <clears throat> and I keep washing my hands. Uh, they're always, they're wet. That's because I just washed them again. Um, it's important that you keep everything clean. Um, I don't know if it has to be that sterile, but uh, you want to make sure that uh, your uh, good bacteria and yeast survive. Okay, tea bags are all out. Okay, uh, this liquid should have, uh, it should be, the tea should be acidic. So to make it acidic, you need to have about a half a cup to a cup of either uh, vinegar, which sometimes I use apple cider vinegar, or uh, some kombucha tea uh, from a previous batch. Now here, I'm going to take some out of my container. There's roughly a half of a cup. This also has, the tea also has the uh, living organisms in it. So that's an advantage too. It also helps. Um, we're going to add, I have enough here. I'm just going to use the kombucha from this container. Okay. Tastes like tea. Okay, we're going to add the Scooby to the tea, and I keep the Scooby in the refrigerator in a container with other fermented tea. And here's the Scooby. Now, anytime I uh, touch this, I make sure my hands are very clean. I just wash them again. And uh, this Scooby will fit into the container exactly because this grew in this same container. So it will float on top. Some people call this a mushroom also. Um, where do you get the Scooby? Um, I don't, I think you can buy them online and I think they dry them and you can reconstitute it. But um, what I did is I made my own and this is just filled with Scoobies. But what I want to do is show you, here's a small one. Okay, this one <clears throat> grew in a quart mason jar. And the way I came by my original Scooby um, was I fermented it from a bottle of kombucha that I purchased in the store. And if it's good kombucha, it'll still be alive. If, if it's not living in there, uh, you're wasting your money. So uh, the Scooby uh, bacteria, the yeast in the bacteria, is a live culture and it is living inside these uh, containers that you buy. Um, what you do to make your Scooby is you take the uh, quart jar, you make some tea, let it cool down, you add sugar, and you uh, add the Scooby, or you, not the Scooby, you add the tea. Now I used the entire uh, bottle, and I divided it amongst two quart jars, and then I topped it up with the tea that sweetened with the sugar. I let this set, uh, between two and three weeks, and it grew the Scooby on top. It took a little bit longer because we're working with much lower volume of uh, bacteria that's available uh, at the onset. So that's why it took longer to grow. Uh, one of them grew, one didn't. And uh, you have to make sure that it the bottle is not sealed, that it does have ventilation, but you've got to cover it so that you don't have uh, different bacteria or yeast. You don't want to get the bad guys in there. You want to, and you also want to keep insects out. Uh, fruit flies will be attracted to anything that's fermenting, 
that's why they, they're called fruit flies. When fruit is rotting, it's going through a fermentation process where it's breaking the sugars down and creating an alcohol. Um, the fruit flies are attracted to the alcohol. It's ingrained in them. They have to consume alcohol or they will die. They have a parasite that lives inside and the alcohol kills the parasite. So if they don't consume the alcohol, the parasite will kill the uh, fruit fly. So that's one reason why fruit flies are attracted to anything that is uh, in the fermentation process. So you want to keep the fruit flies away so for that reason it's, it's covered. Uh, if you're making wine, you definitely don't want fruit flies near or touching your batch of wine because uh, fruit flies carry vinegar bacteria and the vinegar bacteria can change your wine into a, bac into a vinegar. So you have to make sure that you're keeping those fruit flies away from your wine. We're not doing wine right now, I just saw a fruit fly. <coughs> Um, a, a little testimonial, i got to get that covered. Uh, I really believe in taking the probiotics. Uh, um, myself, I suffered with acid reflux for 15, 20 years. And uh, I was constantly popping in acids, Tums. Um, and I just have some things here. These things, antacids, Tums prescription medicine. Um, all these I haven't been taking for more than a year now and I attribute it to uh, the probiotics, the balance in, in the gut system. Uh, once you start taking an antacid it disrupts the chemical balance inside your stomach. Uh, your uh, in stomach system uh, produces the acids uh, to digest your food and if you start taking an antacid you're knocking the chemical balance out and uh, your stomach produces more acid to compensate for what you just knocked out so it's it's a uh, n not a winning cycle that you can get locked into and uh, I haven't had to take any medication I'm off every medication uh, including a blood pressure that I was on for years and I attribute that to changing my diet and uh, also to taking probiotics, eating something probiotic every day and I really believe in that and uh, it's working, it's working for me. Okay now, uh, once everything is set up we need to cover it and I use a clean towel for this, when I do the, when I did the original uh, Scooby that I made, I used paper towels over it, and that worked fine because I was just covering a, a quart jar. And I don't know where this came from, but it works perfect. It's a rubber band, and I seal the lid with the rubber band. This keeps it taut and keeps anything up. So now this has to sit for a week to possibly a week and a half to two weeks, especially since it's colder. I leave this set in a warmer area. I leave it set next to my stove because that's usually getting a little bit more heat there. Some people will have a hot mat that they plug in and, and uh, I guess some people use them for making like yogurts. And, uh, this can, this can work and it can be very consistent because you can maintain that temperature. Um, with mine, I can make a visual inspection. If it grew the new Scooby and to about the proper width, um, I can just uh, judge that uh, it was a successful batch. Uh, if you leave it set too long, it can make it uh, taste almost like vinegar and that could be too too hard to drink. Um, this is from my last batch. Um, it, I usually drink uh, one bottle will usually last me uh, maybe two three days. I don't drink the whole bottle in the one day. Um, you know, I drink a lot of water. Speaking of the water, when you're making the tea. My water is spring water. I have spring water in, into the house and there's no chlorine in it. 
Um, I don't know if making tea will uh, boil the chlorine out. I believe leaving water set for a number of days, the chlorine can leave. They do that with uh, fish tanks. But the chlorine is made to kill bacteria, and we're trying to culture bacteria and yeast in this drink. So chlorine would be a bad idea. You can make your tea from uh, distilled water or spring water that you buy in the store. Um, but here, spring water comes out of my spigots, and I'm real happy with that. Good drinking water. Okay, now we need to let this set uh, for a week or more and see what happens. The tea's been working for about nine days. Uh, I usually I only uh, let it ferment for a week, uh, but because it's colder, since it's in the winter, um, I need the extra time. Okay, the uh, covering is removed, and next we have to take the scooby off, and I wash my hands about twice. Um, I try to keep very sterile. Some people wear gloves. Um, I don't think that's necessary. Um, and okay, here is the Scooby and the newly formed. You can see here they're kind of adhered together. But they're both, uh, the, the one that I put in was about a quarter inch thick, and the new one is also about the same thickness, if not even a little bit more. So this is a real good indicator. This one here was on top, that's the original that was placed in, and I store the Scooby in fermented tea, which is almost like vinegar right now, and this is the one that just uh, was formed in nine days. So that's going to be placed in the new batch that I will make, and I keep this in the refrigerator. Okay, the next we're going to bottle. And I save my old kombucha bottles. Um, they cost about almost four dollars a bottle right now, and that's a real good reason why to be making your own. But I save the bottles because it's a heavier glass, and uh, the caps are fairly sturdy. Um, and because it's carbonated, uh, a thin glass might break. Okay, now uh, when I'm filling these, I fill them about two thirds full, and then I add a flavoring. And what I've been using for flavoring is 100% grape juice. And this is it here. Um, the ingredient, it says it's all natural, it's 100% juice, but it's made from a concentrate. Okay, this is about how full that I like them, and then juice will go and fill the remaining part. The uh, juice is made from a concentrate, uh, the only ingredients added to this one is, of course, water. And uh, they have citric acid added, which I don't like that. Citric acid does occur naturally in fruits, but when it's an additive, it is a chemical. And it's not a good one to be consuming. So I like to steer away from that when I can.
this uh, container will make me approximately seven jars. So I have seven, and I just cleaned these prior to being filled. After I add the juice, I'm going to let these set out in the counter where it's still warm for between two and five days and probably because we're winter time um, we'll go the five days. It will carbonate and it continues to get more acidic so the longer you let it set the more it starts tasting like a vinegar. So I like to uh, not have it too strong of a vinegar flavor. It makes it a little bit rougher to drink. It's still good for you. But uh, you also want to enjoy the beverage. The uh, Concord grape juice, uh, being that it is fermenting, and it does create a little bit of alcohol in the process, um, makes it taste like a new uh, grape wine, which would be good for you too, as long as it's fermented. And you know, a lot of doctors recommend that you have a glass of red wine every day, and the reasoning behind that is the uh, probiotics that should be in it. However, unless you're buying a organic type wine where you're not killing the yeast that fermented um, I'm getting distracted uh, if you're not killing the yeast that's fermented in the wine uh, you'll have the probiotic the yeast is, is the probiotic but making wine almost every winery universally adds uh, potassium and sulfite into the wine that kills everything in there so the wine that they bottle will not go into fermentation. So the wine that I make I do not kill any of that uh, yeast and uh, I let the wine age about two years uh, before I bottle it. Even with that uh, disturbing the wine after it's bottled, uh, changing its temperature, shaking it up, can kick that into another fermentation and can carbonate your, your wine, which most people don't like the idea of opening a bottle that's not champagne and coming out like it's champagne. Now th this uh, uh, kombucha being carbonated, uh, it you have to be real careful when you're opening it because uh, it can uh, foam over. And uh, the last time when I made a batch, it does form a small scooby at the top, or mother, at the top of the bottle. And the last batch that I made, I turned the bottle over to see if the scooby would move, to see if it did make a scooby, because that's a good indicator that it did some more fermentation with the sugar and the juice and then I I was real gentle and I set it back down on the counter and uh, turned around and in about 30 seconds I heard it sound like a gun going off and it blew the lid off and this is the lid and I don't know if you can see it we'll get a good shot here that lid hit the ceiling and with such force it just uh, just about crunched it so there is some good carbonation in there, and it, when it blew that apart, it uh, emptied about 80% of all the fluid that was in there. Okay, here is the grape juice, and I'll bring this up to right about to the neck of the bottle. And this gives enough flavoring, and it has enough sugars that uh, it will do its second carbonation. Um, some people what they do is uh, just add some sh a, a little bit of sugar, about half a teaspoon, 
into the juice, um, into the tea, uh, and that will give it its second uh, carbonation while it's sitting. Okay, I ran out of juice, so my option then is to top these last ones off and add a little bit of sugar and uh, maybe put some flavoring in, into the wine because uh, the black tea uh, doesn't have a lot of flavoring and I like to have the juice that is enjoyable to drink and not just uh, for the probiotic. Okay, these are finished. They'll be capped and put aside and then left to sit out for about five days. Then uh, at that time I'll put them in the refrigerator and that should stop the secondary fermentation that's going on. Okay, these last three I'm going to add maple syrup. Uh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania makes the best maple syrup in the, in the world. In fact, they produce so much they sell it to Vermont and Vermont puts their labels on Pennsylvania maple syrup. Okay, I'm adding about a tablespoon just because I like the flavor of maple syrup. adding the maple syrup first just so that I don't overflow the container and we can't let any of this go to waste mm. I can drink it straight any cooking that I do I no longer use sugar. It's always maple syrup. I swear by it. This last bit that I'm using, I always was reserving for the new batch of tea. And when you start a new batch, you always want to make sure that the tea has a, a good bit of acidity in it. And reasoning behind that, uh, having the acidity up, is that kind of guarantees that the good probiotics are going to get us a head start on all the bad guys that might be in there. So the good guys like the acidity and it gets them off to a, a good start. Um, before I was adding the uh, vinegar or the kombucha back to the uh, new batch that I'm making. Um, without doing that I uh, had it fail a few times. Since I've been adding approximately a half to a cup of either the kombucha or vinegar, um, I've never had uh, a failed batch. Uh, they always turned out really good. The uh, maple syrup, I'm kind of excited to see how that one's going to turn out. So that's an experiment. The other four should be fine. And I uh, hope this was informative and uh, you enjoyed the, the little clip here. And uh, have a good day. Thanks, my friends.